the myth of Japanese infallibility ended on May 30, 2024. For 50 years, the automotive world operated on a single, immutable law of physics. If you want a machine that will outlast civilization itself, you buy a Toyota. That reputation was not just a marketing slogan. It was a currency more stable than the US dollar. It was built on the backs of the Hilux, the Land Cruiser, and the million mile tundras that refused to die. But right now, that currency is in free fall. We are witnessing the most significant engineering collapse in the history of modern Japanese manufacturing. This is not a simple recall. This is not a faulty window switch or a glitchy infotainment screen. We are talking about the catastrophic total seizure of the internal combustion heart of Toyota's flagship American truck. 102,000 engines. A recall so complex, so expensive, and so devastating that it threatens to undo decades of brand equity in a single fiscal quarter. And the most terrifying part? The seeds of this disaster were planted years ago in a corporate boardroom that decided to trade simplicity for complexity. You are looking at a $2 billion mistake caused by something smaller than a grain of sand. This is the story of the V35A FTS engine failure and why the king of reliability has officially been dethroned. Welcome to the Forensic Breakdown. To understand how we got here, we have to understand what was lost. For over a decade, the Toyota Tundra was powered by the 3URFE 5.7-liter V8. That engine was a dinosaur. It was inefficient, it was heavy, and it drank fuel like a cargo ship. But it was bulletproof. It had an aluminum block, dual VVTi, and a massive timing chain that could tow the space shuttle. Owners regularly clocked over 1 million miles on original internals. It was over-engineered because Toyota's philosophy, the Toyota production system, prioritized durability over everything else. Kaizen, continuous improvement, meant you didn't change what worked, you refined it. But the regulatory walls were closing in. The United States EPA and the NHTSA tightened CAFE standards. The writing was on the wall. The V8 had to die. In its place, Toyota's engineers at the Toyota Motor Manufacturing Alabama plant were tasked with building a replacement that could produce more torque, get better mileage, and meet Euro 6 and US LEV 3 emission standards. Their solution was the V35A FTS. On paper, it is a masterpiece of thermodynamics. It is a 3.4-liter twin-turbocharged V6. It features an 85.5-millimeter bore and a 97.6-millimeter stroke. It utilizes D4ST direct and port injection. It has laser-clad valve seats for better cooling and heat transfer. It produces 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque, blowing the old V8 out of the water. In the iForce Max hybrid configuration, those numbers jump to 437 horsepower and a staggering 583 pound-feet of torque. It is a technological marvel. And that is exactly the problem. The more complex the plumbing, the easier it is to clog the drain. When the third-generation Tundra launched for the 2022 model year, the media praised the power delivery, but almost immediately, forums like Tundras.com began receiving isolated reports from owners. Low-mileage trucks, some with less than 500 miles on the odometer, were experiencing engine knocking followed by sudden, total loss of power. The dashboard would light up like a Christmas tree, displaying reduced engine power, and the truck would enter limp mode before dying completely. The diagnosis was always the same, spun main bearings. For those who don't know, the main bearings are the critical interface between the crankshaft and the engine block. They rely on a thin film of pressurized oil to keep the metal surfaces from touching. If that oil film is interrupted for even a fraction of a second at 3000 RPM, friction spikes instantly, the bearing welds itself to the crankshaft, spins out of its housing, and the engine destroys itself from the inside out. Initial reports were dismissed by loyalists as early production teething issues, but the numbers kept climbing. 2022 models, then 2023 models, then early 2024 models. This wasn't a bad batch. This was systemic. Toyota remained silent publicly, but internally, panic was setting in. 
We now have access to the timeline of the investigation. Toyota's field technical reports, FTRs, began piling up. They collected failed engines and shipped them back to the teardown labs. What they found inside the oil galleries shocked the engineering team. It wasn't a design flaw in the bearing material. It wasn't a failure of the oil pump logic. It was foreign debris, metal shavings. During the machining process of the engine block at the Alabama facility, the equipment used to bore out the cylinders and oil passages was leaving behind minute metallic fragments. In a normal assembly process, the block is washed under high pressure to remove this swarf, but the cleaning process for the V35 AFTS was insufficient. These razor-sharp shards of metal were hiding in the crevices of the block, waiting. Once the customer took delivery and the engine went through its first heat cycles, the metal expanded, the oil flow and those shards were dislodged. They traveled through the oil passages, bypassed the filter because they were already downstream in the block or small enough to pass through during cold start bypass, and lodged themselves directly into the main bearings. It is a ticking time bomb. You could have a truck with 5,000 miles that runs perfectly, but that piece of debris is sitting there waiting for the moment you merge onto a highway to dislodge and kill the engine. On May 30th, 2024, the hammer dropped. NHTSA recall 24V-381. The population, 102,092 vehicles. The scope, 2022 to 2023 Toyota Tundras and Lexus LX600s. The remedy? At the time of the announcement, there was none. Toyota admitted, we are currently developing a remedy. This is the corporate equivalent of a distress flare. They admitted that the engines could seize while driving, increasing the risk of a crash. This destroyed the resale value of the Gen 3 Tundra overnight. Who wants to buy a truck that might need a new heart at any moment? Let's talk about the economics of this failure, because the numbers are astronomical. Replacing a modern twin-turbo V6 is not like swapping a small-block Chevy in your garage. This requires lifting the cab off the chassis. The labor time is booked at nearly 20 to 30 hours, depending on the tech's proficiency. The engine itself, a complete long-block assembly, including the turbos, because usually when the main bearing goes, the metal glitter destroys the turbos too, retails for over $15,000. Add in fluids, gaskets, labor, and loaner vehicles, you are looking at a cost to Toyota of approximately $20,000 to $30,000 per truck. Multiply that by 102,000 units. That is a potential liability of $3 billion. Even if they only replace the short block, the labor costs remain immense and the precision required to rebuild a complex twin-turbo engine in a dealership service bay versus a factory cleanroom introduces a whole new layer of risk. We are hearing reports from dealership technicians who are terrified of this recall. They are not set up to do heavy engine rebuilding at this scale. One mistake in sealing the timing cover, one loose bolt on the turbo feed line, and the truck comes back. This is a logistical nightmare that will clog service drives for the next two years. But the financial cost pales in comparison to the reputational cost. Toyota owners are a specific breed. They pay the Toyota tax, the premium over a Ford F-150 or a Ram 1500, specifically to avoid this scenario. They accept dated interiors, older technology, and worse fuel economy in exchange for the guarantee that the truck will start every morning. Toyota traded that guarantee for fuel economy numbers that, in the real world, aren't even that impressive. The Tundra averages 17 to 19 mpg, marginally better than the V8, but worse than Ford's Power Boost Hybrid. So what did they gain? Nothing. What did they lose? Trust. This disaster also shines a light on a broader issue in the industry, the rushed transition to forced induction. By downsizing displacement and adding turbos to move heavy trucks, you are increasing cylinder pressures and thermal stress. The safety margins are thinner. The tolerances are tighter. There is no room for error. The 5.7 liter V8 could run on bad gas, skip an oil change, and survive. The 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 cannot survive a speck of dust. This recalls the Hyundai Kia Theta 2 engine debacle, but for Toyota to fall into the same trap is unforgivable. Their quality control protocols are supposed to be the gold standard of the world. The Andon cord, the ability for any worker to stop the line if they see a defect, was not pulled in Alabama. Why? 
Was it pressure to meet production quotas? Was it a failure of the automated inspection cameras? We may never know the internal politics, but the result is clear. The fix, announced later in July 2024, is a total engine replacement for affected vehicles. Not a repair, a replacement. Toyota is biting the bullet. They are shipping tens of thousands of new long blocks to dealers. This is the honorable move, but it is also the only move. If they attempted to repair these engines, the class action lawsuits would bankrupt the division. They have to flush the system. But here is the lingering question, the open loop we need to close. How do we know the new engines are safe? Toyota claims they have updated the manufacturing process to control debris, but the design of the engine remains the same. The complexity remains the same. If you are a Tundra owner, every time you press the start button, you will wonder, is today the day? This incident proves that even giants can bleed. It proves that the relentless pursuit of efficiency often comes at the cost of durability, and it leaves the door wide open for competitors. Ford and GM are watching this with glee. The American truck buyer is loyal, but their loyalty is to performance, not a badge. If the Toyota doesn't work, they will move on. The age of the unkillable Toyota is over. The age of the disposable appliance has arrived. The question is no longer how long will it last, but is it under warranty? For a brand built on the concept of QDR, quality, durability, reliability, that shift in consumer mindset is a fate worse than bankruptcy. It is irrelevance. The Tundra will survive, Toyota will survive, but the halo is gone. The blind faith is gone. And once you lose that, you never really get it back.